Hello everybody, this is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Eye on Business. Today we're going to talk about the best advice startups will never follow. Let me tell you a few short, hair-raising stories of entrepreneurs who have raised money and regretted it later. Here are some of the rules that entrepreneurs almost always ignore to their own peril. First, don't take money from relatives who can't afford to walk away without remorse. Do take money from experienced family members only after you ask them if they're sure three or four times that they're willing to invest. By the third time, you can be sure that they aren't just being overly emotional or feel they can't say no. Also, if things go south, they're more likely to remember that you weren't pushy and that you gave them three or four more chances. There's a common expectation among entrepreneurs that seed money from family is great. Letting close relatives in on the ground floor of a new deal? Well, the problem, of course, comes if the business fails. Some relatives believe that a family bond is an insurance policy and that all investments or notes will always be repaid no matter what the circumstance. Consider whether the family member being asked to invest has the capacity to walk away happily from a lost cause. Number two is don't take money, especially startup loans from unsophisticated investors. I was a co-lender and assumed the chairmanship of a young startup where the entrepreneur's cousin also loaned money under the same terms as I did. And when the business failed, the cousin sued his own relative and me and my wife who didn't even know the name of the players and even my family trust in a state planning vehicle with no separate assets. It took several times the value of the cousin's loan in legal fees alone and a settlement just to extradite my interests from this suit that had no merit, but would have cost hundreds of thousands of dollars just to go to trial. Number three, do take loans from unsophisticated investors or from sophisticated investors only after you have tried everything to get them to purchase equity instead of a loan, and always with clear wording on automatic loan extensions if you're going to take a loan, even if you're making progress but need additional time to meet the full set of goals. Number four, don't let yourself talk yourself into a high valuation for the first round of financing for any reason, no matter what. Even if your hair is on fire and even if your idea is worth billions, the lesson is that no one should price them too hard and it's not only hard to teach, but it's ignored by entrepreneurs on a regular basis. Early investors who don't have the experience to compare values or ask tough questions or accept the word of the entrepreneur as to valuations, they're the ones that are the most damaged when this happens. Later investors will enter the picture only after ensuring that the valuation is reasonable and comparable with other opportunities for their money. But often they're going to walk from a deal that has a high valuation in an earlier round just to keep from having to worry about arguing with the earlier investors. It's not just worth the effort to argue with early investors when there is so many other deals that call for a sophisticated investor's money. It's just worth walking away. Next, try not to take dumb money where the investor or lender supplies nothing other than cash. There are five attributes of a great investor. Again, I wrote this in a book quite a long time ago called Extending the Runway. It's the money they offer under reasonable terms, their ability to guide you with advice that you, the entrepreneur, can take to grow a company, their knowledge of how to best use a corporate resource in time, their ability to extend relationships with others that will help you get there faster to speed your growth. Those are additional assets that are worth as much as the money that have been offered itself. Next, don't walk away from rejection by experienced investors thinking that they're stupid or just don't get it. Most of us in the world of early stage investing have seen thousands of proposals. I must have seen seven or eight thousand myself, good and bad. And even if we don't seem to like the brilliant idea that you have or buy into its value, we may be comparing it to previous lost investments or industry experiences far beyond yours. And finally, do ask sets of progressively deeper questions to get down to the heart of why they didn't invest. Every contact should be a learning experience, and those with sophisticated investors are doubly valuable. A well-placed no 
could well be a step toward a corrected course and a later yes. Well, those are pieces of advice from someone who's been investing for a long time to people who often have never seen the opportunity to see a sophisticated investor and what that investor can do. But here's my wish for you. If you're looking for money, may you do it in an organized way, in a way that follows these rules that we just talked about today, and may you be successful. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Ion Business.